When you think of transportation, what comes to mind? Trains, planes, maybe even cars? To early NASA engineers, the space plane meant transportation to space, but also to a future space station and maybe even further out to other planets. In fact, the official name of the shuttle program is the Space Transportation System. STS are the beginning initials to every mission, from STS-1 to the last mission, STS-135, Every mission has its own patch that was designed by the astronauts. To accomplish all these missions, the early NASA engineers needed a good vehicle design. These early Phase A design studies focused on a fully reusable vehicle whose primary purpose was to build and support the space station. In 1968, NASA issued a request for these design proposals. Aerospace companies clamored for the chance to be able to design the space shuttle. The favored design was created by an engineer who had more than enough experience. Well, Max Faget was one of those really fascinating characters. His fingerprints are literally all over every human spacecraft ever built by the, by the United States. He was the chief designer of Mercury. He had a heavy hand in the Gemini program and the Apollo program, and his early ideas of the space shuttle were, were critical to its development over time thereafter. Max Faget's thoughtful approach to problem solving made him the key person in the design process, especially since there were so many ideas on how to build the shuttle. There is Max Faget's idea of a two-stage, fully reusable spacecraft there is then industry responses to that saying, oh, that's not going to work, or I can modify it in certain ways. And they came up with their own designs and their own ideas on this. And some of those designs are truly exotic. Uh, one of my personal favorites was three winged vehicles, each with pilots. Their bellies were all connected together. It was called a triamese concept. And the first stage fires, and it goes up to some altitude, and then it drops off, and, and the pilot brings it back for a landing. The second stage fires, and it goes up to a certain altitude and drops off, and the pilot brings it back for a landing. And the third stage then goes into orbit. That's another idea. It's a concept that, in theory, could work, but it was not chosen for this particular approach. Instead, NASA backed away from fully reusable mostly because of cost. By making the fuel tank external and disposable, NASA was able to reduce the developmental costs. Another, what I think is the exciting portion of the shuttle mission that we've never done before, and that is after the landing, the same vehicle will be uh, checked out again, refurbished, taken back to the pad, and the same vehicle will go again to make another mission and again and again, and therein lies the economy of this shuttle as compared to our previous endeavors in space. A partially reusable space shuttle meant that practically everything on board needed to be built for reusability. NASA needed new materials and procedures to accomplish this goal. A mere seven months after President Nixon formally announced the space shuttle, NASA awarded the contract to North American Rockwell. The work on building the space shuttle could finally begin. Here's something that we would, we would launch like a rocket, it would operate like a spacecraft on orbit, and then land like an airplane. It was unheard of at that point in time. They were constantly thinking about reusability and making sure that what was part of the orbiters were systems that would not require a lot of maintenance along the way. That was the ultimate goal. Fly a hundred times, be very quick to fly, turn around very quickly, and so forth. Now, obviously, we didn't quite get to that exact goal. We, we didn't turn it around quite as quickly as, as they anticipated early on because they realized um, it, it's still a vehicle that we learn new things about every day. Um, so that wasn't expected when they did the design. Good ideas come from everywhere. There's just no question about it. There are good ideas that are within NASA that are brought forward. They come from industry. They come from universities. The process is never clean. It's, it's never one of these kind of one-way things, person here proposes, then it's accepted, then it's implemented. We would like to think it happens that easily, but innovation is a difficult task. We've seen that happen over and over again.